are live on Facebook. Awesome. Good afternoon. How are you all today? Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm so excited about this platform. I was thinking about Pamela earlier today, Pamela Bridgman Bartell. And about 10 minutes ago, I jumped out there and, and just did a quick live to invite you all to join us today uh, because it's so important. It's so key. I know that this year we're decreeing and declaring. I've been saying it all year long and everybody is coming into agreement with me that this is the year of the double. But what I want you to know is that we can send out all of these great opportunities for you. We can week after week present um, great speakers on a Take Charge Tuesday platform that bring us a wealth of business acumen. But if you're not emotionally and, and mentally stable, there's going to be an opportunity where it's going to be detrimental at some point to your experience in the double in every aspect of your life. And I know, I know it personally. I'm just going to be transparent. There are so many attacks that are out there. Yesterday, I was attacked on believing something that God had said. And one of the opportunities is to draw from those things that we facilitate here at Wellness Wednesday. Help me a lot to be able to press through. Some of the opportunities when you feel overwhelmed is that you have to press into the truth of God's word. Truth wins every time. And if you couple how I was feeling yesterday with some back pain and some old issues rising up and mixing all that together, non-productive. So that's why we have to have this program follow Take Charge Tuesday platform, because you can get uh, hyped up and ready to move forward. But if you're challenging those areas, that's a problem. So Pamela, oh, I'm so excited. And this week, this month, we've been talking about wisdom all week. So I'm totally excited about that as well. Wonderful. But welcome to Wellness Wednesday. And you look beautiful today. And thank you, Bianca, for being here with us to support us both here and also on the Facebook side of the house. Okay, so here we are, Pamela. Once again, it's Wellness Wednesday. I'm so grateful to be here, grateful to be a GCBN corporate sponsor. Uh, it's been uh, such a blessing uh, to me personally and to my business. Uh, and I, uh, I really invite uh, each of you, if you uh, even if you don't own a business right now, you may be considering uh, become a part of our Georgia Christian Business Network. Those of you who uh, do own a business, consider sponsoring. My name is Pamela awesome. Bartell, and I am a licensed community associate. I also hold credentials as a certified master of business counselor or certified clinical trauma professional. I'm an ordained minister and an Air Force veteran. I own a business here in uh, Cartersville, here in Northwest Georgia, called the Counseling and Consultation, doing trauma informed care for individuals uh, who may be experiencing difficulty with mood disorders, anxiety. Uh, disorders, uh, relationship issues, uh, and as a veteran, I have a particular uh, affinity for mental health. This month, as Beth said, we have been talking about experiencing, or rather exercising wisdom to experience in large. We talked about in the very first session that wisdom is the principle. Uh, and then, uh, um, which is wisdom is fundamental. And then last week we talked, uh, we said wisdom is gettable. So uh, as we talked about uh, wisdom being fundamental, uh, we identified that uh, definition of wisdom, which is, it is a capacity of the mind that allows you to understand life from God's perspective. Capacity of the mind which allows you to understand life from God's perspective. 
Um, you know, what's interesting is uh, even individuals who uh, uh, don't claim to know God, individuals who are atheist who are agnostic, when you look at the principles they put in life, if they are successful, all of those principles are Bible-based principles. They won't acknowledge them, but they are because wisdom is that which flows from the mind. That which flows from the mind. Um, and then uh, throughout the book of Proverbs, uh, we're encouraged to get wisdom. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, writer of the book of Proverbs, who's believed in Solomon, says, uh, a person who gets wisdom loves life. That's in uh, nine, Proverbs 19 and 8. He even says that it's better to get wisdom than to get gold. And, and think about that. You can get all the gold in the world, but, that it, but if you don't have the wisdom to hold on to, may as well not have gotten the gold. So you need to get wisdom even uh, more than you need to get gold. And then he also points out that uh, getting wisdom helps you to find life and to assume favor from the Lord. And when I think about what he's talking about in terms of finding life, he's not just talking about existing. But he's talking about what Jesus talked about. He said that he came to give us life and that more brother. He came to, uh, wisdom allows us to, 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 to access um, uh, that, that uh, spiritual part of, of being that causes us to feel uh, exhilarated and, 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 and helps us to be grateful for all that that is around us. And so uh, the first week uh, we talked about wisdom is fundamental. Anything else add about week one? Before? You know, the thing that I was thinking is what you said about how opportunities that if you were to get the goal, and I love that particular scripture because I pondered it, and the opportunity is that someone might think instantly, oh, I'll take the goal, you know, and, but you can't buy wisdom, you know, I love that Proverbs 4, 7, which we kicked off, and we continue to repeat show after show, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all of that getting, you have to get understanding. So a person that would say, give me the goal and skip the wisdom, fail to get the understanding. Because what wisdom, you can't buy it. You know, and we've talked about ways of actually building up and growing in wisdom. You grow so in we're about wisdom. To right. And we're going to go into it more today. And I, yeah, love, gonna, this uh, I love the notes. They're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so reviewing, so coming up to you. So last week, you talked about the fact that wisdom is gettable. Yeah, I love uh, that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in the our principal scripture here, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, you get wisdom. And then in the book of James, we're told uh, to ask for wisdom uh, because, and God will give it liberally. And so, how do yeah. you get wisdom? First thing you got, you, you ask for it. And of course, uh -huh. we see back in the Old Testament, the wisest man in the world uh, asked for wisdom. Uh -huh. And when he asked for wisdom rather than riches and gold, God gave him riches and gold on top of it. So, wisdom, uh, Solomon, the wisest in the man, then will ask for wisdom. And then we get over here to James and James says, okay, ask for wisdom, and God's going to give it to you liberally without scolding you or chiding you for asking. So wow. the way you, you get wisdom is that you ask for it uh, specifically. Uh, so if you lack it, ask for it. Secondly, gain experience. Um, and that means that uh, wisdom takes time and patience. Right, so you, you uh, and, and sometimes it takes trying and failing. 
<laughs> so you don't get something doesn't go exactly as you thought it would go. But the next time you do this particular thing, you have wisdom because you now know, as Ben said before, the scripture is uh, uh, therefore uh, get wisdom and all you're getting, get understanding. You now know that that didn't work. So wisdom comes also with having some patience. It comes with gaining experience. And then one that I, uh, and part of gaining experience uh, also is learning from other people. And the favorite people uh, that I like learning from is especially elders, people who have been uh, on this earth a long time. Uh, sit at their feet and gain wisdom. Beth, what are your observations about wisdom is gettable? I, I love it, gettable. I, first of all, I have to tell you again, I just think that is the cutest, most practical way of saying, and, and it's unique, that wisdom is gettable. And being that, then beyond that, I'd say is, Getting wisdom is so urgent to existence. And I was having a thought while you were talking about it is because you talked about ask when we were doing the first part review. We don't ask for it. And what I was thinking is wisdom is teachable. And you were talking about instructions. Yeah, experience. Sitting at the feet. Remember when um, Minister Everson joined us mm -hmm. that week? Uh, I think it was around the first week that we talked about wisdom and he joined in and he talked about my mom and my late mom and being able to go around her experience. The wisdom is unique. And, and I love, and I don't want to say it, but I guess I got to, because we're almost there anyway, is the way you defined it too, is that it's the capacity of the mind that allows us to understand life from God's perspective. And when you say that, it just really sheds light on what wisdom really is, because practical uh, let's see, I want to say it like this. Common sense is what people talk about some. Oh, you just need common sense. No, you need to up level. You need wisdom because if you're not viewing from God's perspective, you're missing. That is your common sense. And when there's something about that word common. And I need Jennifer McCollin to help me with that. Come on, Beth, she come said, on. Yeah, treating treating me as if I'm common. There's right. something about that word that just doesn't resonate mm -hmm. with my spirit, man. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there's nothing common about sense. Right. You know, when you know, just a combination. And this is just me, okay? I, but if if you're hearing something or feeling something, please jump in here because common sense. That means that is common and and sense that to the common. And 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 that that disturbs me. I want to up level. I want to see it from how you define wisdom. Is the capacity of mind that is God's mind, because we're created in his image. You know, he said, let this mind what? be in you that, that was, was also, also in Christ Jesus. And, and so if I'm a, in agreement or operating from the sense of mine that is I experience the high sense that is available to me. You froze. So repeat what you said okay. because you froze there. I said, if I'm operating in the sense that is common to man, then I'm not operating in the highest availability right. of sense that is is available to me. Right. You know, absolutely. The other yeah. the other thing, and and that is in that arena is uh, getting wisdom and asking for God. Um, asking from God is, is praying uh, uh, with, in the spirit, uh, allowing the, the, 
the spirit of God because how unsearchable are his ways, right? So, but if you allow, uh, as the woman tell us, allow the spirit to ask God for what you need. And then after you pray, listen and let that wisdom then manifest itself in your life. And so, uh, and actually today I've gotten ahead of myself because today I'm going to be talking about I'm going to be talking uh, 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 about uh, wisdom in, in, in relationships and, and what you need to do that. But, but praying for it is another way that you, uh, you get wisdom. So, so today wow. we're talking about uh, wisdom in relationships. Wow. Uh, and, uh, I, I know I put out there both uh, personal and professional, and, but uh, we talking about about relationships Uh Um, being wise is important in all aspects of our our lives and uh i yeah i say that that personal relationship is the most important especially if you are so because it's God and then the marriage and then your children and then everybody else. And so after you cultivate that relationship with God, you wise uh-huh. in your relationship with God, worship and praise and study of his word, but cultivating that relationship with God. The next uh-huh. thing you need to do is be wise in your relationship with your father. So awesome. How how do you rise in your intimate relationships? Yeah. Just have in, in, what are some of you? In in relationships, you know, first of all, you talked about prayer. And prayer is so essential to first of all go to God in prayer. If you lack wisdom, we have to ask the father of wisdom, the all wise God. And so the way that we communicate with God, and I think sometimes we minimize prayer in yeah. relationships. We really do. You know, we'll pray over the children if we're married, but but praying husband oh, and wife. Oh, we and 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 pray at dinner, but praying one for another is so essential that that's how wisdom gets developed uh, and it is wisdom that fosters a quality relationship with your partner and ultimately wow. your extended family but uh, the wisdom uh means that you move beyond selfishness like how do i how do i know that I'm being wise in my intimate relationship. I know that I'm being wise because I'm not self-centered. I know that I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being wise because I'm considering my partner. This is why uh, when I when people are sitting here on this couch, they've come in for premarital or marital counseling, and they're sitting on my couch. The first thing I'm going to ask them is, tell me. What do you know about your partner? I look at their love languages. What is your partner's love language? Um, what, what do they like? What brings them joy? Right? And if they can't tell me that, that's what we begin to work on. Because the scripture says to husbands dwell with Life according to knowledge. And you know what that means in the Greek? The same thing it means in English. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just what my Bible school professor told me. But anyway. Yeah. But so, so in knowledge, remember our principal scripture about wisdom being fundamental and therefore uh, you need knowledge and understanding. So if you're if you are going to 
develop um, a solid relationship, loving relationship with your intimate partner, you've got to be wise in your relationship with them. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I love you. Wow. Love it has to be more than sentimentality. Love also has to be wisdom. Awesome. Awesome. And the thing that we have to understand about the truth of God's word being primary wisdom, speaking of the relationship with in, in this setting as husband and wife, um, as if, like, for instance, if there's an argument or there's a challenge or conflict, um, something, confrontation. Well, that scripture says, be angry, but seeing not. And if you're not looking to God for direction in your relationship and allowing him to be the final, I mean, it could be, I'm right, you're wrong. You're right, I'm wrong, you know. But the founded the foundation for and the basis for our opportunities for settling disagreement is found in wisdom through the word of God. And Which so, is what we talked about last week. How do you get wisdom? Through the word of God. The word of God. Way. Right, for sure. But in relationships, sometimes the, the key is often pointing fingers. Do you follow what I'm saying? And so having referenced what we talked about last week is essential to bring it back this week is that when we are in relationships and we're trying to work out matters within a relationship, if we don't have a basis of truth and excuse the wiggling, but I'm having some serious challenges here with my back. But um, the opportunity is, um, will you, allow God to be the, the, the end all of all, you know, can we just go to his word and find an opportunity that, because his word is truth, number one, established, but also for every aspect of our lives, there's an opportunity for us to be able to find whatever it is, related to whatever the matter is. And some people have questions whether or not the word is relevant for present day. Oh my God, it's more so relevant now than I believe it's ever been. You know, I, I see you there, Maggie, Bernice and Toby, thank you for joining us. And Maggie, I see you have looked like you want to say something. So please feel free to jump in and share, you know, for definite. So, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Maggie. Go ahead. No, I missed the first few minutes. So, but you're talking about in a marriage situation, correct? Well, we're it, talking about relationship. relationship. So we're, I just started out with marriage, and then I'm going to talk about friendships, colleagues, and community afterwards. But we're, just, we're just talking about marriage right now. Okay. It is interesting. You're talking about the love languages. A lot of times we don't know those. And until we do, you miss because you're giving one way and the person, they appreciate it, but it's not received like you think it's going to be. And I think that causes a lot of disappointment because we're like, I did all of this for you. And they're like, that's not necessarily something I would have chosen. So. Yeah, well, one of the <laughs> examples that I use with couples is the husband brings home two dozen red roses and a genuine crystal vase. And wife puts them on the table behind the couch. And he's like, because he was expecting her to hug him and give him a kiss and say, oh, baby, I thank you. When had he loaded the dishwasher, he would have gotten the reaction. Because <laughs> in that instance, his love language is gift given and hers is acts of service. And so just sort of knowing and, and, and the other thing, here's wisdom, here's wisdom. The other thing is not just knowing my partner's love language, but if my partner's love language is different from my own, being willing to speak in my partner's love language. 
even though it might not be something that comes natural for me. And so that's the other thing about wisdom. And that goes back to remember we said that wisdom is unselfish. It's not yes. selfish. So. Awesome. Awesome. Wisdom in uh, with friends and um, colleagues and community can influence your life. In similar fashion, your life influence or your behavior influence the lives of others. So when you behave wisely, then you're able to impact your community. And for those of us who are in businesses, to impact our clients and colleagues in uh, a very helpful way. We're able to help them, them to grow when we behave wisely, right? Because a person who is wise is one um, who walks in integrity. And so people are willing to follow you, are willing to listen to you, because of your integrity. And so what are, what are your thoughts then? Yes, and integrity is at the top of my list for wisdom. And so I agree wholeheartedly with you. And I'm going to scoop back just a second to okay. the common sense opportunity because it came to me. Um, I just want to read this from 1 Corinthians, I think you've referenced it at some point, but I just want to read it again. Um, 319, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness mm -hmm. with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men for all things of yours. And he goes on to say, and you're a Christ and Christ is God's in, in, in the ending of that chapter. But this is what I want to focus on because you talked about integrity. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, but it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. Sometimes people are deceivers, you know, and, and that they want to tell you the crafty thing to do. And this is why this is necessary to understand, but it's not the thing of integrity. And so therefore it is not wisdom from God. It, 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 see, then I have to tell you this. See, God gives the foolish things because he said, let him become a fool. I didn't read that part. I'm sorry, 18. Let no one deceive himself among anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise, okay? See, God gives the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. It may seem as if you're losing if you give your right for another's wrong. It, it may seem like, oh, you're letting um, them t push you around or tell, it's God. God gives the foolish things. Yes, Toby, manipulation is not persuasion. Manipulation is, hey, uh, what's her name? Jezebel type spirit. Yeah, right, that's, right. that's what that is. Yeah. And I, I was looking, adding to that, the other scripture, the one that I referenced earlier, is that the wisdom that comes from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial, and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness sown in peace by those who make peace. And we talked last week about how wisdom, how, what, uh, a manifestation of a person who's wise, is a person who is one who walks in peace, is one who is gentle. That is what, what, what wisdom is. Uh, when a person it gets all wound up, and the book of Proverbs has a lot to say about that person who, you know, is so so easily uh, irritated. That person is not one who is walking in wisdom. That person. Is you you said a key word, reasoning, and this isn't just in marriage. So, um, yeah, you know, I had already gone down to. 
others. Right, right. And so at any point, Maggie, and I'm so excited that you're our guest presenter. Pamela has next week off, and you're going to be our guest presenter, uh, Coach Maggie. Thank for you. Legacy Health Coaching. <laughs> Yeah, so give Pamela a break. But I have any comments on that, please chime in. But one thing that I wanted to hone in on is a key word that I believe Pamela uh, brought to the scene is reasoning. When she went on to talk about the someone that's hot headed, if they can't even sit down and have a conversation, that's not using wisdom. Correct. Wisdom allows an opportunity for someone to be heard. And in the communication, uh, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in the relationship, a marriage, uh, significant others, however you, children. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Children, adult parenting, uh, just, just relating to children. It is so important uh, that we make sure that we allow them that voice. That, that, that their voice is heard. And in our family, we have family devotion uh, mostly every Sunday, unless something prevents it, you know, comes up emergency or whatever with our family. And Bianca's on this call too. And she knows last week we watched about um, listening and I, Bianca had a higher score than mine. I, I came in at about a five and I'm a coach. And, and I was like, you know, and I was honest, and I'm being transparent with you right now because I saw opportunity. And there's no sense in budging, you know, because who am I lying to? <laughs> I want to be better. And but the way that he defined it really broke it down. And I was like, oh my God, I have some things to work on. And when we're using wisdom in relationships, we can improve our relationships instantly absolutely if we would just absolutely. allow wisdom to be on the scene and some of that hot headedness heat our quick responses that we haven't processed through if we just listen you know so bottom line wisdom in relationships not just american relationships our friendships with colleagues even in our communities, it's, 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 it's not optional. Uh, it allows us to make better contributions to, to uh, whatever it is that we need to, to, uh, to build uh, by balancing our needs with the balance of, of others. Um, I wanted to just make a statement and then I want to give three examples of wisdom from the Old Testament and would like uh, to get all of your feedback on it, including Toby, Bernice, but anyway. So wisdom in business relationships means treating others with dignity. It's listening more than you talk. It means remember what is important to your customer or your strategic partner and valuing it as much as your own priorities. It means finding win-win solutions. So wisdom in business, is finding win-win solutions, both you and your partner, as well as for your customers, or in my case, clients or patients. It's about win-win, what it is that we help the, uh, our topic for this month, exercising wisdom to experience enlargement. And enlargement, you know, uh, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financial wisdom is going to contribute to that. I have three examples I want to comment on. So the three examples are Solomon's arbitration between the two brothers, Abigail's intervention with King David, and Esther's negotiation on the behalf of the Jews. So I want you guys to tell me where the wisdom is in each so the first one, uh, as you may know, uh, these two women come to Solomon with this child. And both women say to King Solomon, this is my child. And they continue this, this back and forth. And, and finally, Solomon says, 
you know, because they didn't have DNA testing. And I'm sure Solomon had a DNA test, which is done DNA test, but he couldn't do that. He says, I tell you what, I'll just cut the child in half, give you half, and you give you half. And then the one woman started to weep and said, no, that the other woman. And Solomon says, so tell me, somebody, any of the five of you, where's the wisdom? What does Solomon do? Somebody other than Beth, Toby or Maggie. I, that's what I was waiting. I was waiting. Okay, ask the question. You cut out a little bit. What okay. was the question? We're looking for, for wisdom. How did Solomon demonstrate wisdom in that arbitration between those two mothers? Well, he knew that the true mother would come forward and it was more important for to save the baby than for her to have the baby. Whereas the other mother, because she wasn't a real mother, she was willing for him to cut the baby in half. So he looked at the heart and it was a greater sacrifice for the real mother, but she wanted her baby to live. And the wisdom that that uh, real mother demonstrates is through, remember the word we used earlier, integrity. Okay. And so this arbitration that Solomon does underscores for us that integrity is an essential part of wisdom. Next example. So uh, Mabel. Toby, Toby has a comment. Oh, go ahead, Toby. Just a, just a short one. When you were talking about the win-win situation, I never realized that Solomon also did what was best for the baby. Mm. That, that the baby won. He was thinking about the welfare of the child. So sometimes in our businesses, we need to think about the welfare of the child. Yeah. So that's, that's I it. I love it. I love it, Toby. Awesome. I love it, I love Toby. it. I love it. Yeah. And I'm going to try to make it to your event, by the way. Yeah, you let's, better give her come. <laughs> let's give her an opportunity to talk about that in, in, at the end, at the close, okay. we will. The other well, thing thank that you I told me, say, that's, that's excellent. That's, that's totally excellent. And the other thing that I would add, not even add, just reframe from what uh, the heart is what Maggie brought forth is the, the God, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. and to heart is all tied into integrity. It, if, if, if your heart is right, you're a person more likely to walk in integrity. And what life is what I see all over, which encompass, encompasses Toby, yours and Maggie's point. Who is willing to sacrifice so that mm -hmm. someone can have a more abundant life mm -hmm. because that's the model that Jesus, that's that's operating in the spirit of God. When you said that Jesus earlier, it was about abundant life, abundant life. A baby half is no good to me. Half of a baby is no good to me for anyone. It wouldn't avail the baby nor either of the mothers, okay? because it was going to be a dead child. So what God looks for is in your wisdom, hear me well, this is from God. I promise you, this is from God. Where is it going to bring life to the circumstances, to those that are involved? That's where God's wisdom is going to be found. Yeah. It's yeah. in what would bring life. Yeah. I promise you that. I promise you that's from God. He put it and dumped it in my spirit just Amen. right in this setting. Yeah. And, and it goes back to the, uh, the Proverbs that we, we talked about earlier, how wisdom gives those who like, uh, find life and receive favor from the Lord. People who yeah. walk in wisdom find life and receive favor from the Lord. The second example is that of Abigail's intervention with King David. So Abigail's husband, Nabal, he was a rich man. And uh, he insulted David's men and he refused to help them. And David was so incensed by this 
that he was going to kill Nabal and his servants. But Abigail goes out and first she makes an observation. Uh, my husband is not very smart. What he, what he did was stupid. Would you please forgive him? And because Abigail what, acknowledged that that wasn't the right thing to do, and that she, and she also brought with her provisions. So she didn't go uh, empty handed. She brought with her the provisions that Nabal had refused to give uh, David's servants in the first place. Plus, she uh, acknowledged that Nabal was a pretty stupid person, and she asked David to forgive him. And she ultimately ends up becoming David's wife, but that's another story. <laughs> the wisdom has to do with that. I want you to come on has to comment on has to do with the fact that uh, she uh, she went to David, acknowledged that her husband didn't do something that was right. Uh, she brought provisions with her and asked David to please uh, um, let everybody else be safe despite Mabel's stupidity. So talk to me uh, about where the wisdom is. Wow, that that is so that is so awesome because it's so funny that Pastor Fred, uh, my apostle Fred's father, ninety years old, spoke on Sunday, and Apostle Fred spoke. This is one of the topics uh, that he made a point. Um, on this is one opportunity i'm gonna trust god on this okay so y'all pray but this is an opportunity where the lord saw fit to um reward uh her in the end like he said by becoming his wife but also um i'm sorry i'm sorry okay okay I'm sorry, a little distraction there because we're just gonna protect the platform. But the opportunity is that God saw fit that to honor, she covered her husband, number one, which was wise for a period of time. He ended it up, you know, long story, read the story is really good. But the story that the opportunity is that not only, remember what I said earlier about life, she was looking out for not only herself all the other servants and her family members because david was going for the kill yep he would, okay he would have yeah him. yeah that's it and but we also go back to uh remember i talked about wisdom in relationships even though clearly nabel and abigail wasn't having a very healthy relationship abigail had in her relationship with Nabal because she knew Nabal. And remember we uh -huh. said earlier in our discussion that part of wisdom in your relationship with your significant other is knowing them. And Abigail knew Nabal. She, she recognized his personality. Uh, and she recognized his bad behavior. She knew this man. And so she was a wise in her relationship. And then she became wise in her interaction with David, which if we talk about uh, interaction with community, and in this case, it would have been, even though David's the king, he's actually coming into their property, you know, she interacted wisely with, with him as well. Awesome, awesome, for sure. Any other comments on that? Uh, Robert, yes. Uh, wisdom to me is simply choosing to be wise. That was pretty, that's really good. And Toby goes, Abigail is one of my all time favorite people. Oh yeah, she's a bad girl. Uh, Bernice had earlier said Solomon asked for the spirit of discernment. He saw yes. and prayed to God for the difference between right and wrong. Yeah, and then Toby, she also had a reputation for having a having wisdom. That's why the servants came to her and not her husband. And not Nabal. That is, and not Nabal. 
And that's because, see, another point that we've made yeah. as we talked about yeah. exercising wisdom to experience enlargement is that when you are wise, remember I, I talked about integrity, because when you are wise, people will know and they'll know to come to you. They will know your integrity and will know to come to you. Wow. So, wow. Absolutely. My last example, and I have to, between these two examples, I'm like, if I can't get to one, do is it Abigail or Esther? But I'm glad I'm going to be able to get to both of them. Because Esther, uh-huh. Esther negotiates on behalf of an entire nation. So here are three wise things that Esther does. The first thing that Esther does is um, she calls for a fast. The second thing Esther does is she uh, consults with her cousin, her uh, uncle, cousin, something, he's a cousin, something, Mordecai. The second thing that she does before even telling the king what she desires, she has a meal prepared and she invites the person to that meal that she knows that she wants the king to recognize to be a conniving person. So she is wise in allowing the king to see his behavior before the king actually makes his decree. Talk to me, guys. Esther's negotiation on behalf of the Jews. Talk to me about her wise behavior in that circumstance. Well, I think of the fact that she didn't point out Haman's evil deed, even though she knew it. She basically let him expose himself. She just presented an opportunity for it to all fall into place. And sometimes we jump in and we wanna point fingers, we wanna shake fingers, we wanna accuse instead of letting it just happen. And she's like, I didn't didn't do anything. I just prepared a feast. So I love that. She wasn't conniving or manipulating the situation. The other thing that I wanted to point out on, on this is Remember, we said wisdom is gettable. And what she did to get her wisdom was she, the fasting. And the other thing she did was she consulted with an elder. So wisdom is gettable. And Esther engaged in getting her wisdom. Go ahead, Beth. You're muted, you're muted. I love this one. Esther's my girl. I just think she is the coolest thing, you know, and, but once she sought wise counsel is what you were saying. And she listened to what the counsel, not only do a lot of people come and seek wisdom. And we talked about this in our family devotion on Sunday, but what they do with the wisdom they, they may just be wanting to tell their story. I mean, I've had coaching clients I was sharing with my family that I fired because I got tired of hearing the story over and over again. And I was enabling them in a sense to stay stuck. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you, if you have coaches or counselors have had that right. opportunity, yeah. but people just like to tell that story. And if you're careful, you'll listen and you start giving that uh, an unsafe level of empathy. You, you, you know what, not empathy. Well, it becomes it's sympathy, sympathy as opposed to sympathy. sympathy. And it's if sympathy. you're going to be effective, it needs to be empathy instead of sympathy. Beth throws right. again. Yes, I said, even if I said it, it didn't sound right. But okay, I'm good. Can you yeah, hear me? now you're, I'm good. you're unfrozen. Okay, yeah. because even if you couldn't, um, yeah, because you have to be careful. I, it didn't even sound right when I said it, when I said, uh, empathy because it's not empathy it's definitely sympathy at that point and you have to watch getting into your spirit but when Esther was uh, speaking um, in wisdom 
to how she interpreted what Mordecai had given for her to do, yet she put her own touch on it. She turned around and knew and understood and acted in wisdom to say, what I need you to do if I'm going to do this, knowing the prior prayer and fasting is go pray for me. Go fast for me. Because I know I'm to do this thing, but I want to be covered. You know, wise counsel is sometimes be still and know that I'm God. Wisdom is is the opportunity is to I say I'm gonna say it in in way I frame it in a saying less said is best said sometimes <laughs> less better, said yeah. is your best mouth said. closed uh, girl it you better know it <laughs> <laughs> okay Toby says so good yes wisdom is also knowing what not to say and sometimes what not to say is not not to open your mouth to say anything. Well, is to just as, listen. What right. Maggie said was, uh, uh, Esther didn't point her finger at, at Haman. She she did she didn't even say, oh, he's he's building that uh, uh, uh-huh. Haman's new thing out there for me. He didn't, he didn't do that, like Maggie said. No, she didn't do that. Uh huh. No, just no. Let it unfold, and wisdom will do that. Wisdom allows things to unfold. So uh, I, want I, to I, I want one other quick point okay. is, is uh, 2 Corinthians 1 12. And this is Paul speaking about the matter of how he presented himself. But he starts at the 12th verse. For our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God and more abundantly toward you. And so what I reason I wanted to write that, read that is because grace, see God's grace is sufficient, but you got to see God's grace as his power and his ability and not just his unmerited favor. Because if we look at it, if we fail to see it as his power and his ability, what we miss out on is he's given us the power to be be still, to be quiet, to listen, to hear him, and then to administer the wisdom, sometimes from a quiet place. Yes. yes. From a quiet place. The, yes. the, the, the speaker, and I can't think of his name on our video that we watched Sunday, said, um, Let's let's pray to God right now in his huge congregation. And even for us, we participated. And for 30 seconds, there was silence. And he went on to say that that silence probably was more silence than the average person has experienced in in a long time. And, And when we are in a situation, in a relationship, and whether it's with our spouse, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in business, uh, making a decision, uh, uh, whatever it is with our children, sometimes we just need to get quiet. And it may feel like a strange, odd place for a moment there, but if you extend it, just do the 30 seconds like he had us do, or if you can do it longer. God had me in a day of silence yesterday. I'm talking literally shut down my phone, turned it off, then just turn it over, turned it off because I needed to hear from God. I was in a place where only sometimes you need God's touch. And when you get it, you'll know that he touched you. But wisdom would tell you, you know what you're processing? Don't go make calls. You know, don't go engaging and trying to encourage people right now because that's not what you're stuck in. And you need to look at what's going to bring life. That's my story today, and I'm sticking to it. (laughs) (laughs) So before Toby tells us about her event, for the month of uh, April, uh, we talked about experiencing wisdom uh, exercise of wisdom to experience enlargement. And we uh, talking about wisdom is the fundamental thing 
we uh, define wisdom. And one of the key things that, that was just uh, fascinating for me is we pointed out that, that wisdom is um, the Greek word Sophia, uh, which uh, has to do with, is a feminine pronoun and has to do too with uh, Yahweh uh, being uh, 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 Jehovah, the many breasted one, the nurturing God. And so part of wisdom is that you get nurtured as well as you're able to work to nurture others when you walk in wisdom. Then week two, we talked about wisdom being gettable and we said to get it, you have to want it, ask for it specifically and gain experience as well as learn from others, especially elders. And then today we talked about uh, it's important to have wisdom in relationships that not only is it important to have wisdom in relationship, but that wisdom in relationship is not. Awesome. That's awesome. my story and I'm yeah. sticking to it. <laughs> uh, and next awesome. week, uh, I mean, next month, uh, next week we have uh, Coach Maggie, but next month uh, we're going to be looking at the fruit of the spirit, uh, and uh, the... it's going to be powerful. Yeah, the fruit of the spirit. You, you looking for the title of it? Yeah. I've got it. The yeah. fruit, of, the centrality of the fruit of the spirit to experience double. Right. We're going to talk about cultivating the fruit of the spirit. All of that. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. But Maggie, do you have a title for next week? Mine is on God's double blessing of health and wellness, but it's double in another way. It's for us, but it's also to bless others. I love you know, that. A lot of times we want to get healthy and it's just personal. Uh -huh. The majority of the people I've worked with, it's been that way. It's like, oh, I need to lose some weight. I need to get more energy. But they're thinking of it's just about me. But it's the idea. This is, And that's where the legacy part comes in. I love it. I'm so excited about that. Exactly. I Let probably won't be on the line, but I always watch it on the replay. Okay. Awesome. We have to give her that break. We really appreciate it. But I'll be here and I can't wait. And hopefully some others will join in like today was great. Awesome. But awesome. Always opportunity for the replay. Listen. Pamela, I know you need to drop. You've been wonderful. We love you dearly. We're so thankful for you. I want to remind everyone, we have some outstanding opportunities that are upcoming uh, at Georgia Christian Business Network. Please visit our website, gcbnetwork.com to find out how you can get involved, how you can track with us on the opportunities that we just mentioned for um, Wellness Wednesday coming up next week with Maggie. We're so excited um, to have you and thank you for being on the call today so that you could share with everyone as well. But also coming up on next week, um, we have Take Charge Tuesday, Relentless Faith with Janet Harrington. And she's the CEO and founder of Envisions Academy of Beauty and Wellness. And oh, I can't wait to meet with this lady. She has some awesome opportunities of how God is actually moving in her, her life and to share some announcements with us next week. Okay. And so then also later that day after Janet's presentation, I'm on the road. Y'all pray for me on this back while I travel. I hope it's better than it is today. <laughs> But I'm going by faith anyway, because I'm going to Miller, Georgia. Can't wait to meet and greet all of our Miller, Georgia chapter members at the Curtis Event Center at 630 on April 25th. So please show up and share with people that you know that are in the Middle Georgia area that we definitely hope. Yeah. Um, also, our business fair, our, our first business resource fair is going to be on May 4th in downtown Lawrenceville at Cornerstone Coworking. So we'd love to invite you to come out. Right now, what, what I'd like to ask you to do regarding our business resource fair is to show up. And if you know anyone that is interested in starting a business, um, 
signing up with a low startup business uh, to become an entrepreneur, please tell them it's free to attend. Also, we're interested in business owners that have low startups, like a multi-level marketing type event, uh, to be able to be platform presenters at that event. But Toby, um, not Toby, I'm sorry, Jamie Gray, and also Lee Grant, Gant with Georgia United Credit Union are sponsoring this event alongside of me. Okay, don't forget God Golfing Girls early bird registration is still open. You still have another week or so to be able to uh, sign up. Payment plans are available. Uh, reach out to us, go out on Eventbrite. And if you have some opportunities where we may be able to assist, please let us know, make us aware of that, okay? Also, we'd like to end the show by thanking Toby for stepping out on faith and doing what God called her to do. So Toby, would you like to invite people to your encouragers event? We're so excited about what you're doing. Congratulations. I've already signed up. You're muted. You're muted. That is so good. Thank you. Anyway, thank you, Beth, for signing up. Thank you, everyone. And um, I'm doing an encouragers conference on May 20th from nine to three. And it's pretty much just to get people who I say been in a storm to come and get loved on. People who always pour out but never get poured into to come and get loved on. We're going to have three great speakers. We're going to have breakout sessions. So please come. EncouragesHeartJournals.com. Oh, wow. This is going to be exciting. We're so excited uh, to see our Georgia Christian Business Network members just soaring and walking in um, all that God's intended for them. This is the year of the double. Do not lose sight of that. Looking forward to seeing you all back here next week for Take Charge Tuesday and then following up for Wellness Wednesday with our dear Maggie here. Thank you so much, Bianca, for supporting us here on Zoom and also on Facebook. Thank you for those that joined us over on the Facebook side of the house and even those that will watch the replay. Please send us a chat. Let us know that you're there. We're excited about our opportunities. We're focused, determined, and intentional to put God back in business, and we need your help. Thank you for joining us. Have an enjoyable rest of the week. God bless you all, okay? And also, if you're in downtown Lawrenceville and in the vicinity, join us for uh, the bed race that's sponsored by Family Promise of Gwinnett. I'm a board member there and pray that no rain, that it's going to be a beautiful day because we need to raise money for this awesome cause. Research it, Family Promise of Gwinnett. All right, God bless you. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.